Imagine it is January the 20th, 2025. Donald Trump has just been sworn in as the 47th president of the United States. What does he do next? We don't need to wonder. He's been telling us. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today, I add, I am your warrior. I am your justice. And for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution. I am your retribution. Chilling, but what does it mean? What does retribution look like? It looks a lot like this. This is Project 2025, a thousand-page blueprint being assembled by former Trump aides and Republican think tankers. It's almost a how-to guide for a revenge presidency. As awful as Trump's first term was, there were some guardrails and some internal and external limits on what Trump could or couldn't do. Project 2025 is about removing all those guardrails. It calls for the purging of up to 50,000 civil servants, replacing them with right-wing yes-men. As one ex-Trump aide and current 2025 planner calls it, the president day one will be a wrecking ball for the administrative state. That blueprint also includes plans to roll back discrimination protection for women, gays, lesbians, transgender and queer people. But Trump isn't looking at just the culture wars or the federal civil service. He also wants to use the government to go after his critics. Of course, he does. According to new reporting from The Washington Post, Trump sees the Department of Justice as the best way to do that, including persecuting his own critics, from Joe Biden to former Trump aides who wouldn't go along with his election lies. It's all about weaponizing the federal government, with all of us as bystanders at best and targets at worst. Don't like it? Think you would take to the streets and protest, as so many did in the Women's March and the Black Lives Matter demonstrations during his first term? Well, according to a person involved and internal communications reviewed by The Washington Post, Project 2025 is exploring a plan to invoke the Insurrection Act for the first time since 1871 to deploy the military to crush protesters. Yes, the military. It's a plan reportedly being spearheaded by Jeffrey Clark, the lawyer who is under indictment with Trump for his role in the attempted theft of the 2020 election, when he also allegedly floated the Insurrection Act as a way to keep Trump in office past his expiration date. The current Insurrection Act plan, according to the documents that Post reporters saw, is being treated as a, quote, immediate priority. In other words, on day one, a President Donald Trump might use the military to crack down on his opponents a dictatorial personality cult with no more guardrails, a campaign of vengeance against any American who resists him. What's worse, if the election were held today, it appears voters would put him back in the Oval Office to do all of that. New York Times Siena College polling released this week shows Trump is beating Joe Biden in five of six key battleground states, all states that Biden won in 2020. That mirrored national polling released this week by CBS News, which showed Trump three points ahead of Biden among likely voters. And those voters said Trump was likelier to increase peace and stability in the world than Biden. Really? Perhaps Will Ferrell said it best in the movie Zoolander. I feel like I'm taking crazy pills! We all do. Now, all the obvious caveats apply. First, these are polls for an election that is still a year away. And in off-year elections this past week, Democrats outperformed all expectations, winning the Virginia Senate and House, re-electing Andy Beshear as governor in red Kentucky, taking a key Supreme Court race in Pennsylvania, and turning out voters for an abortion rights initiative in Ohio. And of course, in addition to all of that, Donald Trump still faces 91 criminal charges in four different jurisdictions. Those trials have yet to begin. But then neither Trump nor Biden were on the ballot this past Tuesday. A lot of things can change, will change, before the 2024 election. The question still remains, how is Donald Trump, the unabashedly corrupt, white supremacy courting, dictator-loving, very large brain guy who tried to insurrect his way around an election loss, how is that guy still popular? More popular, in fact, than when he left office in disgrace amid a failed insurrection. That's according to ABC News Washington Post polling that shows more voters have a favorable impression of Trump's overall record in office now, 48 percent, than they did when he left office. Then it was just 38 percent. How? Look, I think a good deal of it is willful amnesia. America has total recalled itself. The average American voter seems to be like Arnold Schwarzenegger's Quaid, who suppressed memories of his own past. 
Today, in 2023, we seem to have wiped our mind of the horror and trauma of those four years in office. Memory hold what a fascist Trump was domestically and what a warmonger he was globally. So today, let's remember a domestic authoritarian who launched his first presidential candidacy, calling Mexicans migrant rapists, who called for a ban on Muslims traveling to the U.S., who embraced racist extremism, saying there were very fine people among the neo-Nazis and white supremacists who marched at Charlottesville in his first year as president, all while blasting education that taught America's fraught racial history as, quote, child abuse. Along the way, Trump talked about the American military as if it was his personal plaything, as when he demanded a Soviet-style military parade, celebrating him, something the second-highest-ranking general in the U.S. told him was something dictators do, including tanks, by the way, whose treads would have destroyed the streets of Washington, D.C., an apt metaphor if there ever was one. Trump, of course, played with the idea of using American soldiers to shoot American demonstrators, too, during the 2020 summer of protest after George Floyd's murder by police, as then-Defense Secretary Mark Esper recalled in his memoir, quote, can't you just shoot them, Trump said? Shoot, just shoot them in the legs or something? Just as we seemingly have no memory of Trump's authoritarianism here at home, we seem to have also forgotten Trump's warmongering abroad. There are people on the left and the right who still think Donald was a dove. And yet... North Korea best not make any more threats to the United States. They will be met with fire, fury. Rocket Man should have been handled a long time ago. I'm more militaristic than anybody in this room. I don't want to go into Iraq, but I will tell you, when we were in, we got out wrong. We should have kept the oil, but okay. <laughs> Maybe you'll have another chance. I was sitting at the table. We had finished dinner. We're now having dessert. And we had the most beautiful piece of chocolate cake that you've ever seen. And President Xi was enjoying it. I said, we've just launched 59 missiles heading to Iraq. Well, you Stop headed it. to Syria. Yes, heading toward Syria. I know more about ISIS than th the generals do, believe me. I'd blow up the pipes, I'd blow up the ref I'd blow up every single inch, there would be nothing left. And I said, I'm gonna bomb the shit out of them. It's true. I don't care. I love war. Yes, that's the guy who dropped more bombs in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria than his predecessor, the man who made a policy of pardoning accused and convicted U.S. war criminals, some of whom ended up campaigning for his re-election, the man who escalated overseas drone strikes and civilian casualties from drone strikes to unprecedented levels, the man who now on the campaign trail for re-election has suggested he would bomb Mexico and take out Iran. This is the guy the voters say is better than Joe Biden when it comes to making Americans and the world safer, more peaceful, more stable. What is it going to take to shake people out of their slumber, to remember the ignorance, the petty authoritarianism, the global instability, the undoing of American justice and democracy that Donald J. Trump represents? I can understand the disillusionment of so many people who voted against Trump and for Joe Biden in 2020. Democrats have not done themselves many favors in trying to undo the damage or move America forward. I get that some of you think Biden is too old, and others of you are genuinely enraged by his support for Israel's bombardment of Gaza. But how is it that so many of you, so many Americans, are forgetting who Donald Trump is, willing to give him another chance at the wheel? Could felony convictions change that? Will we suddenly remember what he is all about if he's a convicted criminal? who stole classified information, covered up hush money payments, tried to steal an election while in office. That's what he's on trial for. The New York Times polling notes that if Trump gets convicted, then up to 7 percent of swing state voters say they will change their vote to Biden. And while that's still a little alarming that a criminal conviction would only change the mind of less than 10 percent of voters, that seemingly measly number could still very well be what Biden needs to get across the finish line. It could move the needle, not just for Biden, but for American democracy itself. The problem is we have no idea whether juries will actually convict a former president for the first time in our history and whether they'll do it in time for next November's election. So then what? Trump's great comeback? Because what's clear is that Trump is benefiting from two groups of American voters. Those who remember the gross authoritarianism and violence that he stood for at home and abroad during his first term and like it, they miss it, and those who have just totally memory hold it all. To the former group, I have nothing to say. Fascism is fascism. But to the latter group, I say, wake up. Open your eyes. Please try and remember the American carnage of 2017 through 2021, because we are now less than a year away from Election Day. 
and we desperately need some total recall.